Let's get into fall of 2018, which was my first semester of junior year. Okay, so the first class I took was junior design, which I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. Basically, it's like a two semester class where you build a project, like a it's basically like software engineering from start to finish. So the next class I took was actually intro to AI. This class was actually really fun. So I liked the professor. I remember I did well in the class and it was one of my first classes where I didn't have homework due every single week or first CS classes, I didn't have homework due every single week. And then the next two classes, the reasons why I liked them so much was because I actually ended up taking like all of the rest of my people requirements. So I took educational technology, cognitive science, and then sensation and perception. So I'll start with like favorite to least, or least favorite to favorite. So sensation and perception was a psychology course, which it was honestly very like neuroscience-y. It was one of the harder psych courses to take, but it like fit really well with my schedule. The professor was a really great professor. So if you want to challenge yourself and take like a harder psych class, then I definitely recommend that class. It's like 30, 40. And then Probably these next two courses, they might be tied for my favorite, but educational technology was such a fun class. It was like a semester long project where we basically, my, I was on a team of like 12 people, which was crazy. It was supposed to be smaller than that, but we made it really big. So my team built a gaming application for students to learn their ABCs that was based off of Baby Shark. It was a musical gaming application. It was really, really cool and interesting to research about. So if you have the opportunity to take that class, definitely take it. I think it was a grad course as well. And then the Last class is cognitive science, which if I had to go back in time and like I wasn't a Georgia Tech at some other school that offered a cognitive science major, I'd probably be one, maybe with like a CS minor or something like that. But if you don't know what cognitive science is, it's basically this like interdisciplinary field of like philosophy, psychology, linguistics, uh, AI. It has all, it's just a big conglomerate of all of these different fields put together. And the class itself was like, the professor wasn't the best. The class itself was like, it wasn't hard, but the, the content of what I was learning, I love. Definitely all three of the classes I just said, honestly, all classes my junior year, well, my junior fall, I recommend. Okay, so then in spring of 2019, which is my second semester junior year, I actually studied abroad in Madrid, Spain. So I took, two like humanities courses and then I also took statistics. So statistics is, I think it's required for every, potentially like every STEM major, maybe every major at Tech, I don't know. I took stat there. It was honestly like, it was okay. I'm not really gonna talk about it because I'm not gonna lie, I barely remember it. Like <laughs> Madrid was a whirlwind, so yeah, but it was a, it wasn't, I remember it was like kind of challenging but it wasn't like the worst thing in the world. So the last class I took has a story to it. So I took combo abroad. So basically when you apply to a university that's for study abroad, you have to make sure that like your credits can transfer. So I did all of this, I think in like the fall, maybe like October of 2018. And then in the spring of 2019 in January, right before I was about to leave, I realized that one of the classes I want to take combo or combinatorics, whatever you want to call it, wasn't transferring properly. So I emailed my advisor or whoever I needed to speak with. And I was like, hey, like what's going on with this class? Like it isn't um, transferring properly. And she was like, you need to, basically I had to do all this work to prove that this combinatorics class was a valid substitute for the Georgia Tech version of it. So I spent probably like, like I was like fighting. Like I really fought to take this class. Anyways, it worked out, I take the class you guys. I, it was a combination of a lot of things with the way that we had, our homework wasn't counted for anything. So the only thing, only, the only place where our grades came from was our test. We had three of those. Second of all, in Madrid, students, someone can correct me if I'm wrong if you're from Madrid, but I'm pretty sure it was pretty common for students to fail classes because it like doesn't affect your GPA. So students will just retake classes over and over again. So it was meant to be a really challenging course. Third of all, I suck at combo. I really do. Something about it. Like, I know I said I was good at discrete math. I also said I was good at algorithms. I have no idea what happened between like discrete math, algo, and then combo. I, I'm like, something about it. Just like, ugh, just, I'm not, I'm not that great at it. If you can see where this is going, um, in combination with me, you know, being a, having a good time in Madrid, skipping class a lot. I failed. I remember I studied so hard for the final. Like I studied for like days. I got like a 40 or something ridiculous like that because I was so bad at it. I like, oh my God. And I remember when that happened, I had like a, 
Instead of having like a mental breakdown, I literally had an epiphany. Firstly, because at Georgia Tech, if you fail a class while you're abroad, it doesn't affect your GPA. So I was like, heh heh. But I had this epiphany where I was like, grades do not matter in the grand scheme of things. If you're like me and you were like super high strung in high school where you would literally flip out over getting like a 96 instead of a 98, which would be like an A plus versus an A or whatever, they really don't matter. In the grand scheme of things, like it really doesn't matter. So that's when I realized that I just like didn't give a crap. I, I cared about grades, you know, to a certain extent. But yeah, so I failed the class. And yeah, it happens. Anyways, so I actually ended up taking two summer courses because I didn't, I wanted to have a lighter load my, a lighter load, a lighter load my senior year. So, so I took two five week classes. I took one called music technology and then another one, I think I took art history. Art history was like BS, whatever. I took them online by the way too. If you have the opportunity to take music technology at Georgia Tech, take that class. That class was so like, it was just nothing I had ever learned before because I mean, like, what am I? I don't know. I played with like GarageBand as a kid, but like, you literally learn how to use Ableton Live. We use this um, application, or it was a web app called, ugh, I forgot what it was called, but you can code in Python to make music, and that was really cool. But I just remember learning how to use Ableton Live, and I was like, damn, I'm like a DJ or whatever. But it was a very cool and interesting class. So if you have the opportunity to take that, they're still offering it. If it's a five week course, definitely recommend it. Whew. Senior year, I'm gonna go through this quick. So one of the classes I took was Privacy Policy Technology and Law, it was CS 4726. Honestly, hands down, probably tied, maybe like tied with the Educational Technology for second favorite class. That class, if you have the opportunity to take that class at Georgia Tech, pretty much I think every single major needs like a ethics credit. So this was my ethics credit. If you have the opportunity to take that class, take it. It's really hard to get into because it's also a grad class. So it's just like, you know, it's just gonna be more people want to take that class. <laughs> You're learning about things that are like actually going on in society. Like I remember we were learning about like when Facebook was getting sued by the DOJ and, or not sued, whatever, going to court for it. But just so many things that I was interested in because I always had a pretty big interest in privacy and you know, how companies are using our data. So if you're interested in that, even if you're not, it's a really great class to take. Professors are phenomenal. And then I took part two of junior design. So uh, since I went abroad, I wasn't able to be in the same group. I just, once again, I joined a literal random group and. I honestly don't have much to say about it aside from like, I coded in, I actually, I coded in, I think Dart is the language and then Flutter is the framework. So we were building an Android app or no, no, no. We were building a cross platform application for, it was like a basically an Atlanta community engagement um, application. It was pretty cool, but not much to it, you know? And then another class I took was personal finance. So this was when Georgia Tech in introduced these like mini master courses, which the class was like five weeks. And I basically just like learned about personal finance and it was honestly pretty cool because I've always liked finance. And then the last two classes, so I had to take Algo and then I also took machine learning for trading. Let's start with Algo. So I said this before, I loved Algo. I've always loved algorithms. I think it's really interesting. I had a good time in the class. And then machine learning for trading. Before I came into college, I wanted to be a quantitative, what are they called? Analyst, quant? quantitative financial analyst, whatever. I used to want to work in like, you know, FinTech, big banks, whatever. This class, and honestly throughout my entire college career, but really this class itself solidified for me that I would like legitimately never be able to do that because I just genuinely wasn't smart enough for it. And I was fine with that. I was like, you know what? Like I'm not, I'm not cut out for that. I think it's super interesting, but there are people who can look at a problem, solve it in like 10 minutes and it'll take me like 10 days to do. But yeah, it was honestly like a very educational course. It was a grad and a undergrad course. So it was a mixed class. So on top of that, like it was just more difficult in nature, but it was like broken up into three different learning sections. Like, like first you learned like NumPy and Pandas. And then you learned about like the actual financial stuff, which was honestly very interesting. And then in the end, you kind of like brought those together with the AI. And at the end, I think we built our own like financial ML model, which is like super cool <laughs> when I say it out loud. This was the class that I literally, I missed two birthday parties and I wanted to die. It was like my friend's 21st. And I literally remember texting and being like, I don't think he can make it. I'm doing um, ML for trading homework. Like what the hell? Anyway, so that class, would I recommend it? Yes, if you're up for the challenge, I think it's a very like, like you just learn a lot in that course and you feel like smart taking it. Um, I ended up doing well in the class too, which was kind of a surprise to me. And then finally, we have made it to my senior year, which honestly, like it would be like, you know, all fun to talk about it and like all happiness, but um, obviously Corona hits in the middle of my senior year. So 
there's that. So I uh, will start off with this psych course. It's called Psych 2015 Research Masters. Every single people, this is the one people class I didn't take because it's really hard to get into. This class is actually really cool. It's a group based class where basically you just do like a research project from start to finish. The next class I took was regular machine learning. So I took machine learning for trading in the fall and then this spring I took regular machine learning. This class, it should have been more difficult than it was, but I think it was like, I don't think I had any tests for one. I think it was like three or four projects and it wasn't hard. Like it was definitely, no, it really, like it's not, it has nothing on machine learning for trading. Yeah, not much else to it. Would I recommend it if you've taken ML for trading? Yes, because it was actually like, it went more math heavy, which is why I kept on mentioning it like multivariable linear algebra that I actually use some of those concepts in machine learning. So it definitely went more math heavy than machine learning for trading. And then I took combo because obviously I failed it in Madrid the year before. I took it with this professor that like had no ratings on rate my professor or anything like that or whatever. There was like another rating system at Georgia Tech. He was a great professor, like phenomenal. And he also really cared and I would like, go to his office hours like literally like every single week because that's how bad I was at combo. He would like write his own questions and they were challenging, let me tell you. Um, but also at the same time, when a professor writes their own questions, it's kind of nice because you're just able to like like go to them because they know, like you know some professors like don't write their own stuff and then you ask them for help and they're like, I don't, I don't know. But he like actually really helped with that stuff. But yeah, it was a good class. Um, that's a lie. I honestly, it wasn't like stressing me out to the point of like machine learning for trading, but I, like overall, I just, I realized I'm really not great at combo. And the last course that I want to talk about, which is just like the final like solidifying course for all of the Intel concentrations of CS at Georgia Tech is Automata and Complexity is the class name. So this class is usually taken in your last and final semester or like second to last semester because it requires like Algo as a prereq requires like combo, requires so many different courses as a prereq because the class is like the, the granddaddy of all of these topics. It was like, the class was like a meme. Like the professor, he was honestly, like he did his best. And I think he was just overwhelmed low key because they kept on having to like increase the capacity of the course because a lot of people need to take this class to graduate. So I think it was like a 300 person class. I honestly, it's one of those classes where you're just sitting there and you're like, I think I'm actually learning like rocket science. Can I tell you like exactly what Automata is? <laughs> I just remember there was like a tape. I don't know, the class was so abstract. Like I, I legitimately like, even thinking about it right now, someone asked me to explain it to them, I would literally just be like, there was a tape and you had to like rewind the tape. I think the professor could have made it more difficult. And I think he was a very understanding. As I said, he seemed overwhelmed. I did well in that class because he curved it. That's what I was trying to remember. Yeah, so the final exam, I don't remember how I did, but I think I, I was just, I had like a failing grade, not a failing grade, that's not true. I would have been freaking out more. I think I had like a C throughout the entire course and I was like, you know, it's literally my final semester. I don't really care. And then he ended up curving it to like a B and the curve was like, I think I remember the curve for B started at like a 66. <laughs> like it was, that was how difficult the class was. So it was very, it's just like a very like, even to explain it is hard, to do it is hard, to learn it is hard. So the professor knew that. He knew coronavirus happened. He curved the hell of that class. Shout out to him, great professor. And that is gonna wrap it up for my video. But if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like. Also subscribe to my channel if you are new here. If you guys are a computer science major or interested in computer science, be sure to check out my other videos as well as leave me a comment down below of literally anything. If you like this video, if you have more questions on the classes that I took. So I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye guys. So tell me who's gonna love you